Hi, I'm Sunila Gupta. Thank you, uh, Mike, and thanks, Kenny, for the introduction. As uh, Kenny mentioned, uh, Bethany I and I will be co-presenting the webinar today. Uh, welcome, and thanks for joining us. Hopefully, you can hear us uh, okay. And if you can't, uh, just type in the chat box, and uh, Mike will uh, respond. As we do with all, all our webinars and meetings, I would like to start us off with a brief safety moment. The graph on the right here illustrates uh, the major causes of fatal occupational injuries based on 2015 labor data. And as you can see, transportation is the top category, with roadway incidents being the major cause. So driving remains the most hazardous thing many of us do each day. So we ask you to keep that in mind when you head back home later today. And uh, a plug for the webinar forum. Since attending this webinar did not require any of us to travel, this format, uh, we consider this as inherently safe. Uh, and I'm going to hand it over to Bethany to start us off with the agenda for the webinar, and she will be covering the phase, uh, first case study. All right. Thanks, Janella. So I'll just start off with a brief overview of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we'll start with an introduction to risk. Um, some of the challenges associated with it and what a complex topic it is and the approach that we've used on our client projects to start to tackle those challenges. I'll go over the first case study, which focuses on risk in a portfolio of environmental remediation sites. And then we've just got a couple of summary examples of similar projects where similar approaches were used. And um, Sunila will be covering case study two, which focuses on deferred maintenance risk she also has a couple of supplemental examples that we'll just give quick summaries of. And finally, we'll wrap up with some questions. So to get us started today, we thought we'd warm everyone up with a quick survey. What we'd like you to do is think about how risk is considered in your world, either you personally, your team, or within your corporation. What we'd like you to think about is how is risk currently defined? Mike, if we could bring that survey over onto the screen. What you should see now is a gray box with our question and some options. We'll give everyone a minute to just click on the option that best aligns with how risk is defined within your world. Safety hazards or any, any other topics. 
We think about risk a lot when we discuss safety, but risk is more broad than potential harm to people. The graphic on this slide depicts some of the other aspects of risk that come into consideration at the organizational level. There's financial risk, which could be the loss of revenue or increased costs, compliance risk, which might take the form of increased reserves, for example, liabilities for environmental projects, strategic risk, where unexpected obstacles may arise to achieving organizational results, and operational risk, where the business of what you do is impacted in an unexpected way. Any of these can impact the way an organization is seen by impacting the perceived brand. Oftentimes, risk takes several forms and therefore needs to be defined specific to the organization or to the team working on it. In a typical system, numerous complexities exist that make defining risk a challenge. For example, different priorities across an organization or different regulatory requirements related to an environmental remediation site or piece of operating equipment. Plus, there are typically different processes being followed to manage each piece of the whole that can bring their own elements of risk into play. So how do we tackle something so complex? Facilitated work utilizing lean principles and tools can help organizations better understand risk by identifying together the different variables that contribute to risk and then systematically prioritizing which elements are important to their organization. The graphics on this slide depict a typical portfolio of environmental sites before and after lean thinking has been applied. Initially, we have a non-standard cluster of information in various forms for each site. This is represented by the various shapes on the left. This data could relate to risk or a variety of topics. Using lean thinking, the team identifies together what is important to measure based on theirs and their organization's goals. They then standardize how each site is assessed against those parameters and establish an effective system for managing the sites, as depicted on the right. The work we do is always going to be unique and complex in many ways. However, a lean approach allows a team to see and understand together what is important in order to be able to better improve and achieve their organizational goals. Throughout today's presentation, you'll hear us highlight various lean tools and approaches that helped our clients achieve their goals. In our first case study, we're going to focus on a project to define and measure risk for a portfolio of environmental remediation sites. The manager of this portfolio was facing several challenges. He had no clear definition of risk and no way to evaluate it across the portfolio. He also struggled to confirm that money was being spent where risk was highest, nor an ability to communicate or confirm this to his management team. Overall, he felt he was managing his sites well and good work was being done, but he felt he needed a more objective and quantitative way to assess the portfolio. We've seen several clients with similar challenges. Their collective perspectives can be rolled up into the inability or uncertainty in answering a single question. If I had $1 million, how would I best apply it to the portfolio of sites to improve remediation success and to reduce risk? Really, this question could apply to many situations, including the management of assets such as buildings or operations equipment, which we will hear more about in case study two. When applying lean, we always first start with understanding who the customers of a process are. Customers are typically those directly paying for and or benefiting or deriving value from the work being conducted. We seek to understand together what is important to them, what they value. This shared understanding allows the team to move forward, ensuring that each decision made is going to deliver that critical value. In this example, the managers of the individual remediation projects, their client management team, and corporate are the customers of the work. The team also identified stakeholders and considered what mattered to them. In this example, they included site operators, their consultants, and also the surrounding community. As you can see, this is a diverse group who will have different priorities driving what, what is important to them. So how do we begin to define and quantify risk considering this complexity? The answer is to use a lean-based approach as depicted here. As discussed in the previous
previous slide, the first step is to understand the customers and what they value. Then we begin to understand what the current situation is. In this case, we sought to understand what site data was available and how sites were currently being prioritized. The next step is to begin to define a prioritization process, starting with the definition of risk. Use lean thinking to identify categories of risk and then factors within each. Once the team is aligned on these, we develop a standard rating scale. For example, a scoring range of 0 to 5 with clear definitions for each numerical value. This approach allows us to be able to more object objectively quantify risk. The data analysis step comprises prioritization of the drivers so that we can assign weighting factors to the biggest drivers of risk. These are often based on what the customers identified in step one value most. The final lean-based step depicted here is development of the future state. This is the step where we take all of the deep thinking to date and using a standard approach, develop the client-specific portfolio risk evaluation tool, which I will show some examples of in a moment. Throughout this approach, lean-based facilitation builds consensus across the team so that selling or checking the identified solution is not necessary. As you'll see in case study two, this general approach can be applied to many other topics. Now we'll dive into how risk is defined in step three. This slide shows an example of risk categories and risk drivers identified by a client team we recently worked with. I'd just like to walk everyone through a couple of these. One category this team identified was regulatory. The drivers they selected for this category included what, regula what type of regulatory program the site was in, the strength and relationship with the regulator, and how often the regulatory PMs change. Another common category that we see selected for risk categories is site conditions. This client team identified numerous important drivers to risk, including a few that are fairly unique and or important to their portfolio. This, is, this includes energetics and emerging compounds. In our work, we have found that the definition of risk has never been the same from one client to another. In fact, they all have significant differences. The risk categories vary, and even more so within the categories the specific drivers identified vary. Therefore, this risk definition step is critical to ensuring that the risk evaluation tool developed in later phases meets the needs of the organization and truly reflects risk as they define it. This slide depicts how the identified risk drivers are quantitatively rated for separate sites. Along the top of this table, you see site information for two example sites. Along the left side of the table, you see the site conditions and the drivers that this team selected. Note the drivers are different in this example from what we saw on the previous slide. For each driver, the client team defined ratings from zero to five, and then rated each site against those. You see two columns for each site as the client chose to assess on-site versus off-site conditions separately. You can see two numerical scores for each driver for each site. At the bottom of this table, you'll see the raw risk scores for each site as well as a weighted risk score. This input data is typically developed with the client and or their consultant teams and is used to populate the final risk tool. An example of this risk tool, which is typically based in Microsoft Excel, is shown here. The weighted risk score is depicted for each site in this column. The sites are grouped statistically based on this score, and using the lean tool of visual management are color-coded to show relative risk grouping. Red is high risk and green is low. In this case, we compared risk against cost and utilized the same statistical grouping and visual management for that data. The customer in this case wanted to be able to identify high-risk, high-spend sites, which you see towards the bottom, 
bottom of this table, and also sites that are misaligned with respect to the two parameters. An example is here where we have a high risk, low spend site, and here are a couple of examples of low risk, yet high spend sites. By standardizing their definition of risk and determining how to measure and quantify it, the client in this case was able to answer the portfolio scale questions important to them. Development of the tool in and of itself does not achieve results, but is a critical step towards measuring to manage. Because we now understand where risk exists across the portfolio, we can take the right steps towards making data-driven decisions. The heat map shown on this slide demonstrates this concept. Along the x-axis, you see projected costs. Along the y-axis is potential liability or business risk. In the lower left quadrant, you see low-risk, low-cost sites represented in a portfolio. And in the upper right are the high-risk, high-spend sites. In the other two quadrants, we see sites which are misaligned with respect to these two parameters. portfolio managers are striving for over time. They want to see misaligned sites better aligned and an overall reduction in risk over time. The results shown on the left side of the slide for, are for a client who used their portfolio risk tool over several years to support decision making. This generated a 30% reduction in overall risk concurrent with a 16% reduction in spend. Over the same period, they saw annual site closure rates increase by over 4x. Ultimately, this lean-based exercise helps the team focus on what is important to generate results. Here you can see a quote from this client who, after applying lean to their portfolio management approach and many of their challenges, stated that the standardization of the work and getting the team to think more innovatively on how and why they're performing their tasks and getting things done are well worth it. Iterations of the tool shown on the previous slides have been developed for a number of clients with varying needs to date. The benefit of the lean-based approach and applying lean thinking to how the tool is designed lends itself to a customizable, scalable, and adaptable approach for measuring and managing risk. These tools have been used in database decision-making as shared in case study one, where we can identify high-risk sites that justify additional focus or additional resources being given to them. We can identify low-risk sites where closure may be requested or else a justified reduced scope of work. We also use this tool for communication to management with its simple visual summary of very complex data. It's been used to identify opportunities for cost savings through portfolio-wide optimization efforts, including considering the size and scale of groundwater monitoring programs compared to risk and making reductions to those where appropriate. It's also been used for acquisition planning and preparation and compliance and process safety. These last two bullets are related to the two examples I'm going to summarize in the next couple of slides. And we'll get into those now. So the lean approach from case study one can be applied to any challenge that requires prioritization. In this first additional example, a lean-based approach was used to assess and manage an acquisition of environmental sites. Based on customer value, critical data parameters were identified to characterize sites and establish a baseline understanding of each. The standard tool developed to capture that data is shown in the upper right. Risk was also defined for this acquisition in each site assessed. The image in the lower left depicts the risk input form used in this effort to then build a risk evaluation tool. Through this approach, data gaps were identified for follow-up, and sites with higher risk were identified early on so that the appropriate resources could be assigned to them. Additionally, negotiations could be made on the purchase agreement and work could be better planned. In this example, a similar approach was used to assess process safety compliance and risk. In this example, the first step was to identify the safety goals of the organization. Based on that understanding, the team then defined hazards to achieving those goals and then identified where those hazards 
hazards existed within work processes, on equipment, or within their facilities. This work was applied in several ways and sh as shown in the following graphics. This visual is an example of the input, as you'll see in the lower section of this image, and the output, which looks similar to the risk heat map we saw in case study one. This was done for a process assessment to depict where an individual facility falls with respect to permitting needs. This client took the results for individual facilities and compared them in order to make decisions across a large portfolio. This visual, generated from the same project, depicts the relative size of measured gaps with respect to the client's process safety elements, which you see listed across the bottom axis of this graph. As you can see, this effort made clear to the client team that there were significant gaps with respect to emergency arrangements, where we see this large red gap. And you see the use of the same lean tool called visual management depicted here. This allowed the team to immediately align on where to begin their improvement efforts to better comply with the organization's process safety needs. Now I'm going to pass you along to Sunila Gupta to present our second case study on deferred maintenance risks. Okay, thank you, Bethany. Uh, our second case study highlights our work for a university client to help them address their risk and challenge associated with deferred maintenance. So a very different setting, as you can see from case study one, but you will see similarities in the challenge and definitely in the approach uh, that we undertook for this client. Uh, universities rely on their facilities management department to have the buildings and associated equipment running smoothly from energy and technology, heating and cooling systems to fixing leaky roofs. Maintaining these assets takes resources, both in terms of dollars and people, which we all know are limited. As some of you might be aware, deferred maintenance has become a significant problem across colleges and universities. For this university, the symptoms were quite visible to the department. 75% of their maintenance work was unplanned, reactive, and costly. And only 60% of the planned work orders were getting complete on a time since they were fighting fires on a daily basis. They had no system of prioritizing their work and activities other than basically squeaky wheel getting the grease. And of course, there simply weren't enough resources and time to fix everything. The facilities department uh, framed the challenge to us as lack of preventive maintenance strategy. This was their burning platform, and they strongly felt that this was eroding the value they, as a department, were providing to the university and its customers. So as you can see, the approach looks uh, quite similar to the one you saw in case study one. We developed a facilitated approach for our work using lean principles and tools to achieve two overarching outcomes. The first was to be able to define the risk of the deferred maintenance for their portfolio of buildings and assets so that they can then undertake a prioritization process for maintenance work. And the second was to work with their team to uncover new ways to conduct and manage their maintenance work. For both the components, uh, the important thing was to understand their customers. The crucial aspect was to engage and work collaboratively with not only their facility management and maintenance staff, but also various trades, building managers, and uh, their academic department heads. As in case study one, understanding the customers and stakeholders and what they valued was essential. Customer value is a key principle of name since it creates a common platform for understanding what is important to the customer you're serving. For this work, it also helped in building consensus amongst the various diverse participants. We helped assess current state of the maintenance work practices and systems. This involves shadowing to observe the processes and behaviors from the work order coming in to the satisfactory completion of the work order. This was a very important part of the approach to get a deeper understanding of what obstacles were getting in the way of effective maintenance, as well as generating ideas from the people doing the work for improvement with the objective to build a better future state. We developed a prioritization process to assess the university's portfolio in a systematic, consistent way. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, in the next few slides as well. An inventory of all buildings and equipment assets was completed. We partnered with a company that specializes in facility assessment benchmarking data in for data analyses and comparison with other higher education institutions, which is what the university wanted to do. So in summary, the process and approach focused on building consensus and buying from the ground up to develop their better future state. Overall, the project team, in this case, in 
understanding of the system as a whole beyond the parts that they themselves touched in their own work. As one of the staff said, we've had people come in before and make recommendations, but this is the first time that anyone has asked us what we think. And this approach was effective because it didn't rely on someone from our side coming in to tell them how to do their job, but let them see and be part of the solution to tackle the challenge that they were facing. The next few slides will delve further into the quantification of the risk to support the maintenance prioritization approach. For the portfolio of the buildings, the characteristics and definitions you see on the table here were established by the client and the various groups using a facilitated approach. These included factors that made buildings unique or important to the institution. They, the stakeholder group identified 13 building characteristics that you see listed here that they believed were most important to guide the preventive maintenance plan for them. And they were tied to the customer value that was previously established in the process. Uh, as part of the process, we helped them assign weight to the 13 characteristics because some were more important than the others. And they were weighted from a high of three to a low of one to have the overall prioritization. And as you can see, the overall approach was uh, distinctly similar to the remediation portfolio evaluation. The characteristics that are listed here can be seen analogous to the risk drivers that we've discussed in case study one. And basically, these characteristics or drivers have differentiate between the mission critical buildings, basically buildings that were essentially to the essential to the core function of the university, and those that uh, warranted only managed care, which were the buildings that provided support but were less critical to the university's core mission. And as you can see, the tool uh, that was Excel-based also looks similar to the case study one here. Uh, we worked with them to complete inputs for each building within uh, their campus. A spreadsheet tool was developed to capture inputs from all the buildings uh, for the portfolio. And then using a facilitated approach, uh, consensus, consensus was built among the team regarding the points assigned to each building. And as you can imagine, you know, people had their different perspective, but having the definition of characteristics helped build that consensus. The result was a total uh, score for each building uh, that's listed here in this gray column. And then that was correlated with a specific maintenance level of service as a goal. For example, buildings that scored uh, 75 or above uh, were uh, deemed to warrant 100% preventive maintenance. Uh, as you can imagine, this uh, ranking prioritization tool alone had a significant effect on providing the focus to the facility management group for their activities. In addition to the prioritization process for the buildings, uh, a cross-functional team uh, consisting of the facility management staff, supervisors, and management was also formed to inventory and prioritize asset types. Uh, these assets are basically equipment systems and components, you know, including uh, hair, air handling units, HVAC systems, and so on. The, te the team roughly evaluated uh, 400 asset types on uh, the entirety of the campus and identified 100, uh, 180 of them as Category 1. Uh, category 1 being defined as critical or essential to the operations of the facility. Through this work, uh, by jointly working together and shadowing each other, the team gained a high level of understanding of building assets including the importance, redundancy, and functionality of each of the assets. And representatives from each trade were engaged as part of the process to vet both the building and the asset prioritization. So the work was done really from bottom up uh, in building the consensus among the, the entire stakeholder and customer group. And uh, as I mentioned in the approach part, in addition to the prioritization, meat of the work also involved assessment of current state of their maintenance work practices and systems. In order to get a deeper understanding of what obstacles were getting in the way of effective maintenance, uh, we paired the maintenance and trade staff with the facility management and consulting team members. And each group walked through the actual work orders as they were performed. And together documented and discussed what problems inhibited their work performance, which ultimately led, led to cost and schedule impacts as well as frustration and workload imbalance on the people side. Uh, they jointly mapped the processes together and depicted all the steps, people, and problems using a lean tool 
called value stream map. From waiting for materials to looking for parking to spending time finding the right piece of equipment, they together identified more than 200 problems. These were categorized and grouped for further analysis under the five main focus areas that you see here. Equipment and tools, work execution, scheduling, tool parts, materials inventory, and then management and communication. Here I would really emphasize the fact that going to where the work actually happens, which is referred to as GEMBA in LEAN, to understand the behaviors and what obstacles were getting in the way was absolutely an essential component of this work. Uh, and their future risk management strategy and implementation of preventive maintenance as part of that. So in lean, problems are seen as goals since they help you uncover improvements to make things more efficient and effective. And we definitely saw this as we paired the, the problems that they came up with with the ideas that they generated. Uh, recognition of the ways and obstacles led to ideas and solutions by the team to address the issues. As is variably, invariably the case when we do this work, there were as many ideas as there were problems. This was not surprising at all, since the people closest to the work have the best understanding of how to make it better. The process and the approach using the facilitation, lean, and respect for their work gave them accountability and ownership. And using lean tools, we help the teams group both the problems and the ideas uh, under common categories. As much as the prioritization and quantification work uh, was an important part of the process and created the framework in quantification of the risk, this uh, next phase of work, uh, identifying the problems and the ideas for overall implementation of preventive maintenance strategy was, uh, was essential because prioritization alone would not create the mindset that would be required for a preventive maintenance strategy to be implemented uh, successfully. Um, uh, and uh, the group and the staff generated 195 ideas to free up uh, 57,000 hours to improve their preventive maintenance. And uh, to put that in context, uh, 57,000 hours was about 20% of their uh, overall labor, ho labor hours available. So a significant uh, chunk of hours that were seen as uh, based in the process that could then be applied to uh, more uh, preventive and uh, value-added work. So in terms of re results, the rigorous and collaborative approach for the work, work, including understanding of customer values, problems, and ideas to improve the processes, resulted in five major focus areas for the implementation of the preventive maintenance strategy. The ideas were vetted uh, amongst the group and organized into a phased implementation approach as summarized in this slide. Uh, we recognized that they needed to pace the activities as they did too. Uh, we used lean tools to help them uh, focus in on the work that would have the most impact with the least amount of difficulty for the phase one work. So they could, uh, they could see early successes and build on it and keep the momentum since that was important. Uh, they did actually identify, and this is uh, something I want to point out, because sometimes lean is seen as uh, somebody coming in and telling you that uh, you, you know, it's, it's seen as cost cutting. Uh, but what it is doing is actually increasing the value. In this case, they actually identified some hiring needs as a result of this work, but uh, without impact to overall budget, because they had found the cost savings in by eliminating waste in some other areas of the work. Um, so in summary, assessing the risks in a systematic way associated with the entire portfolio of buildings and assets was a key step which allowed them to implement an overall preventive maintenance strategy. It provided the focus to the facility management activities and it provided the framework for phased implementation. They were also able to align their budgeting process with the and they leveraged this entire work to make strategic changes and improvements to their processes, all with a focus towards delivering value to the institution and its customers. Through a deeper understanding of hidden waste and opportunities in their processes, they found 57,000 hours, equivalent to about $2.5 million, to apply to the new strategy. And these came from simple things like keeping parts and supplies at location, lessening transportation needs, Electric, electronic tracking of work orders, uh, you know, they, those are the things that lay, led to the available savings 
uh, and it came from realigning uh, of existing resources. The approach was different than what they had done before. It wasn't something somebody coming from outside and telling them, here's your problem, here's your solution, we know how to fix this for you. The facility management staff was at the center of this work, and the lean approach really helped the team to work collaboratively to address the deferred maintenance challenge. So the takeaway message here is that the project approach utilizing lean principles was really the key that gave them the outcome they were looking for, since it engaged the right people uh, in developing the right solutions, making them feel part of the process, and challenging them to address uh, their own challenge. So like with case study one, I have a few additional examples that can speak to uh, uh, the quantification and application of lean tools. Case study two focused on presenting the portfolio level work associated with buildings and uh, assets. Uh, the example here is an application of a lean tool referred to as overall equipment effectiveness, or OEE, which is used at the equipment level and is a key component of any preventive maintenance. This example is about adapting the OEE for a remediation application. Uh, many of the remediation sites have equipment associated with short-term remediation technology or long-term maintenance and monitoring. We uh, adapted the OEE to a tool called Overall Remediation Effectiveness, or an ORE, to help assess on an ongoing basis if the system performance for remediation was a target. So in this example, we worked with the client and contractor uh, on an oxygen injection system. Uh, when we came aboard, the contractor was just measuring uptime and reporting that as the basis for uh, showing that the system was affected, uh, effective. And what we did is we looked uh, at the concept of OEE and looked at uh, availability of the oxygen, the quality of the oxygen in terms of purity, and the delivery of the oxygen at the injection points, and brought those together uh, as and assign weights to each of those. A, a goal range was established for uh, each parameter, as well as measurements that would require action and or uh, review. And all of this info, info was incorporated into this ORE tool. And as you can see, this was a very effective visual way for the client to get a status update and for the contractor to see and the consultant to see where review was needed and uh, where further actions needed to be taken. And overall, this tool helped in better tracking of the remediation system performance so that issues could be identified early and uh, could be addressed in a timely manner. And this actually led to a greater effective uptime overall. The next example shows work for an EHNS client to help them develop a sustainability program for his group. We worked with the team to understand their core uh, corporate goals regarding sustainability, what was the company measuring, and how could his department support that annual reporting. Uh, materiality assessments as well as lean tools to assess impact and difficulty helped prioritize actions that have the most impact on sustainability goals. We also used a lean approach to develop targets for the year for his program that were aligned with the corporate sustainability goals, and then developed a process with the team to help him achieve the goals in a consistent, measurable way, which uh, are actually depicted in a very visual way in this uh, chart on the slide. We were able to utilize uh, our existing standard uh, tools and reporting, which is uh, what you see in this chart here, and it uh, only required minor tweaking to reflect the specific client's value. This enabled the team to look for tangible opportunities to improve overall sustainability of the, pro of the, of the program and also helps with internal reporting for the organization uh, sustainability metrics. So that actually concludes uh, the presentation of the case studies. We hope that through these uh, examples, you've been able to show you the, that the approach was a key element to the success and that it can be applied to many different types of work and challenges, including facilities, remediation, safety, process compliance. Uh, the, the key is by engaging the people develop the right solutions, uh, you, you get better and effective results. Uh, you not only deliver efficiencies, but results that are sustainable. We have a brief survey that 
followed, and then we will have some time for questions. So we, uh, we have discussed uh, several topics in our webinar today, portfolio risk assessment, process safety and compliance, deferred maintenance, equipment, uh, effectiveness, sustainability. If you can just show which were of, were of highest interest to you, that would be really helpful for NEM for their future planning. It is what it is.
those are the things that actually take more time. Uh, and in this case, the total project, I think it was done over a period of six, uh, six months to a year. Perfect. Yeah. To add to that, I would say that mostly in projects, there, it's anywhere from two months to six months, a typical lean project, but they can also be longer term depending on the scale of the challenge that's being addressed. was was in 
part related to that work, being able to identify sites, uh, for instance, that were low, low risk. Um, during the time of this tool, California came out with a low uh, threat closure policy for many sites, which we were then able to quickly assess the entire portfolio to see which sites fell into that program. So a chunk of those came out of that program. Um, others were simply identified as being there, there really is no driver for risk left at the site. The work has been completed. Um, so it was a piece of the, the argument that um, fed into the justification with the regulators that, um, you know, at some sites work was simply completed and it was time to talk about closure.